Hey Lumber Lovers, I have compiled the best parts of all three of our guys all the secrets on the crucial knowledge you need before buying wood. Avoiding rookie mistakes and mastering the buying process like a pro. Regardless of where you're buying lumber from, hopefully from us, whatever your skill level is, this guide is going to give you everything you need. Plus, stick around all the way to the end for a bonus tip that you won't want to miss. Let's go. Kyle and I are going to take a few minutes here and share with you some of our thoughts and ideas and our concept of just how we help people out in the lumber industry. The lumber buying guide. Lumber buying guide. I like it, Kyle. We're going to keep that. Or maybe it's the lumber buying guide. Because when I point fingers, he's going to put the. So when someone comes in, if you're coming to buy lumber, you should have yep. a trailer. Yep. For the most part, you should have already called me 24 hours in advance, especially if you're buying kiln dried lumber. And you should kind of have an idea of the square footage or board footage of the lumber that you need. Kendall, what's a board foot? What is a board foot? Yep. Great question. Get it all the time. Basically, a board foot is a square foot of lumber that's one inch thick. Kind of like a square foot, but it also has a thickness to it. Yeah, it's one inch thick, one foot wide, and one foot long. Yep. Right? And how could that get confusing when you're dealing with a piece of lumber that isn't one foot wide and one foot long? If you've got a seven and a half inch wide piece of lumber that's, you know, 12 feet long, how do you figure out the board footage? Yep, how do you well, do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Length times width times thickness. So it's 12 feet, but you actually have to measure in inches to do this. You go 7.5 inches times 144 inches, which is 12 feet. And then you would divide that by 144 to get seven and a half. You know, you like to hear this, but we probably should have a couple bullet points for answers. A little bit. No, we don't need bullet point answers. This is, a, this is a lumber company that is 100% real. Okay. So we're authentically answering lumber buying guide questions. All right. How much extra, when I'm doing my project, how much extra should I buy in order to make up for mistakes and waste? 10% extra is a pretty good idea because, you know, unless you live five minutes away from us, if you're one board short or one piece short and you gotta drive, you know, an hour each way to come visit us, plus your time and, you know, it just, it's not worth it. You're better off having a little bit extra. There's all kinds of different things that can happen. So it's smart too. Kyle just left me. He left me. How does that make you feel when he leaves? Oh, and then the most important thing, you even do this one. Make sure you get the okay from the boss first. Oh yeah. I really don't want to get, um, sell you a bunch of lumber and then have you come back with a black eye saying that you need to return this lumber because the boss said that the boss didn't approve it. The cool part is we play bad cops, so if you go to him and buy it, you'll get a better discount than when you go to me. I'm usually too busy though. That's why I hired Kyle, so he can take care of it. <laughs> so, what dimensions, what species do we typically have on hand here, Kyle, for people? It depends on what, whether you're going with a rough sawn or kiln dried lumber. Our rough sawn fresh cut green lumber could be any dimension. It's a, we do offer custom sawing so that we'll cut, you know, whatever lumber to whatever dimension you would need. But our kiln dried lumber it typically runs uh, four quarter, and they call it four quarter, all the way up to an eight quarter or even 10 quarter for some rough sawn kiln dried lumber. And then, and then the species will typically, and, okay, let's do it. <laughs> you want <laughs> Woo, Take a break, break time. Lumber buying guide. If you have any sawmill questions or lumber questions that you might want to ask a Sawyer that's got 20 plus years of experience, go ahead and type them in the comments below and we'll answer them in new videos that we create. It's going to be great. Right, Kendall? <laughs>
it still has got moisture in it, so it could uh, warp or cuff. It will shrink some. Um, so really you want to use that on outdoor applications. Kiln dried lumber is definitely more stable, definitely interior projects, I would yep. say. Woodworking. Kiln dried and then exterior projects, you can do a lot of roofs on. And people call me all the time asking if they can use the fresh cut green lumber for certain exterior projects. Is there any kind of tips that you can give people? What is a realistic application for roughs on fresh cut green lumber when dealing with exterior projects? Yeah, well I've, on my houses, I've sided three houses now, my own houses in my cabin with roughs on pine. Um, I usually air dry it for just a two, three weeks, just enough to get some of the moisture out of it. Pine dries fast anyway. And then I will stain it up and put it up on the house as siding if you're doing any posts, so things like that for roughs on. What grades of lumber do you offer and how do they differ in quality and appearance? That's a good question. Well, we have our kiln dried lumber, which we, a lot of times we're keeping like a select and better. Typically here, we'll sort it by species and dimension. Every once in a while for certain types of lumber, like a quarter saw and even, we'll separate it that way. But most of the time you're gonna get a pile that's gonna have a mix between uh, select and better, and then number one common, number two common in there. We usually either make it easy for newer customers and say it's gonna either be clear or rustic. Kiln dried lumber, when I, when I set it in on the hardwoods, they'll dry it down to 6%. And a lot of times it reacclimates back down to around 8%. Um, air dried stuff that's outside is going to be in that 12 to 15% range. Here's a question Do I have 50 plus inch wide lumber? No. Longest we can cut is 20 feet. Widest I can cut, if everything is absolutely perfect, is about 28 inches. And even 24 inch materials can be very difficult to come across. You have to have really big logs that are really, really nice. And it doesn't happen that often. So why are dimensions in not accurate in certain, except for lengths, in certain lumbers? Sure. Like four quarter lumber, right? Yep. So how much is four quarters? Well, four quarters should be one, right? When you get it kiln dried and planed, um, it's not an inch thick anymore. So it's less than an inch, doesn't seem fair. But in all reality, it started out thicker than an inch. So the sawmill loses a little bit in the, in the deal and so does the customer. Now that you know a little bit more about lumber and what we do here at K&J, we're going to find out how to purchase lumber that you need for your next project, a few other questions, and some fun stuff. Is buying lumber at a local lumber store cheaper than big box stores? A lot of times I can beat those big box stores. Maynards. Quality that my lumber gets dried down to is much better. Some of those big box stores, you buy lumber, like an old cord and it's wrapped in plastic. Well, as soon as you take it all that plastic and let it sit for a day or two, it is gonna warp and twist. Because it was hurried along in the drying process and it really wasn't dried down all the way. I take more time to have my lumber dried so it's dried right. Yep. You know, I bring it to a couple of local kilns and both the guys who do that really know what they're doing oh, and yeah. do a really nice job. We want to make sure we get you the lumber that is right for you, right for your project, even if that's not with us. What is the pricing structure for your lumber? And do I have to buy a large amount of quantities or can I just come in and buy a few sticks? If you want to come in and buy kiln dried lumber, you can come in and buy as much or as little as you want. On the kiln dried lumber, if you do buy larger volumes, we do offer a little bit of a discount. And then 100 board feet mix and match. That's any species or size and dimension. That is going to be a 5% discount. And then the 10% discount for 500 board feet or more is going to be um, the same species in the same dimension. You might wonder, do I need to make an appointment to come in and look at Lloyd? What do you say, Kyle? Oh, that'd be a good idea, especially if you're buying more than just a couple of pieces of lumber. Yeah. If you want something like a 30 to 50 board feet or more, I have to pull it out with a forklift to get accessible to some of the lumber that's in here. The other thing is it seems like a lot of times people show up in twos and threes and fours, but all of a sudden it's just Kyle and he can't help everyone at the same time. So if you have a, a, a meeting scheduled, you know that when you get here at 11 o'clock on Tuesday, he's gonna take care of you first. If he knows you're looking for select and better cherry, 
he can have it out and ready instead of you having to wait around for 10 or 15 minutes while he has to wrangle for longer than that you know to get it over here and then he's got to move everything out and he's got to get it and then he's got to pull the stack out he's got to cut the bank i generally tell people 24 hour in advance would be great mm, do i have to pay sales tax yeah Everybody's got to pay sales tax. I get a lot of people ask me that. I'm trying to undercut me. And here comes Kendall. And Kyle give away free piggyback rides too. No, I don't do that. It ain't gonna happen. Free We're gonna give away rides from Kyle. We're gonna give away this cutting board. All right, I'm gonna do the outro separately because I need to point over here. Before you go hop skip into the lumber store, you're gonna need a hold of. <laughs> oh, draw again. Spilling all the secrets on the, the list. Board footage before you even call us helps us to both get. Helps us both get you exactly what you need. All right, let's do it. Run it through one more time. Just one more. Now for the bonus tip, I promise. This guide is great and all, but before you go hop skip into the lumber store, you're gonna need to know how to calculate the board footage you need for your project. So check out this video for a quick and simple way to do just that. Knowing your board footage before you even call us helps us both to get you exactly what you need. Let's go.